For those still feeling the burn, the Vermont Senator is continuing to use social media to reach his millions of loyal followers online. Videos posted on Bernie Sanders Facebook page were watched more than 800 million times in 2017. That's according to his staff. They include conversations with Bill Nye, the science guy, as well as town halls featuring Massachusetts Senator Elizabeth Warren and filmmaker Michael Moore. New York Magazine's Bernie Sanders is quietly building a digital media empire, explores how the senator spreads his message to the masses. And Gabe Benedetti wrote that article. He's a national correspondent for New York Magazine, and he joins us now with more on what this could mean ahead when we look, we're looking at the 2020 uh, presidential election, because politicians typically don't put a lot of energy into something that's good, not going to come back to them in some way. Absolutely. Right? Yeah, that's exactly right. So this article is really fascinating because I know politicians use social media, but I had no idea what Bernie Sanders was up to. We're talking about viewership and readership numbers that rival the New York Times, that rival CNN. Yeah, this is something that really a lot of people have not paid attention to unless you are one of the Bernie uh, folks themselves, you know, someone who's been following him for a few years now. Yeah. But this does go back to something that he's been trying to do for 40 years, ever since he was the mayor of Burlington, Vermont. He's been trying to get around what he calls the corporate media, the mainstream press, and trying to get his message out to people directly. So there is this big question of what does this all mean now? He's a popular guy. He might run for president again. Yeah. But the numbers are pretty staggering. He's able to, when he puts out one of these live streams, outdraw CNN. And some of these videos have gotten 30 million people to watch them. That's yeah. really not nothing. And we're talking about, like, those are the sort of numbers of people that are watching them live. But because they're online, they just live there forever. They get shared. And so the viewership sort of keeps going up. Yeah, and one of the reasons that this is so interesting is that this isn't exactly like Right after 2016, Bernie Sanders sat down with his top advisors and said, let's create a news network. Yeah. It sort of just came together. He was sitting down with uh, the Reverend Dr. William Barber, who's an who's a activist in North Carolina, and his team said, well, why don't we film this and see how it goes? It got hundreds of thousands of views. Yeah. A few days later, he sat down with Bill Nye, four and a half million views. So it just ballooned from there. Now he has only three full-time staffers working on this thing, but they published over 550 videos in 2017 alone. And they don't all have Bernie Sanders. And in fact, most of them don't have Bernie Sanders in them. It's right. all sorts of other stuff. It's really sort of policy agenda stuff, the, the stuff that Bernie Sanders is interested in. That's exactly right. And a lot of it does feature, you know, real people, people talking about their own experience with the healthcare system or the tax system. But it, all of them do have a sort of little thing on it that says, you know, Bernie TV or Bernie Sanders Senate office. Mm -hmm. So it is is interesting. Of course, he says that this is news. The reality, of course, is that these are essentially just video press releases from his office. So while they're packaged as if it's a news show, this is there's no room for dissent. And right. it's not like he's talking about the day-to-day -day news that most people think of as news. He's talking about policy stuff that he wants people to be thinking about. Yeah, now I remember after reading your article and you describing some of these videos, I remember stumbling on some of these videos in my you know my Facebook news feed and I um, at least when I thought about it now, I wasn't aware of the fact that it was coming from the Bernie Sanders sort of office. I, I'm sure it was on there, sure. but, I, but I didn't realize it initially. Um, it, clearly, the, the people watching this, when you have those sort of numbers, it's not just Bernie Sanders supporters. It must be other people as well. Why do you think so many people are interested? Well, I think part of it is that you have this new media environment in which things are very polarized. You know, you have a lot of Republicans and a lot of Trump supporters who go straight to Fox News or to some other outlets. And there are a lot of people who are progressives, many of whom are Sanders supporters, but some of whom aren't, mm -hmm. who are looking for a sort of clear alternative there on the left that does sort of unabashedly say we are the lefty angle on this stuff. Mm -hmm. So I think a lot of people do like that side. Of course, this isn't a straight analogy because it is just web videos. It's mm -hmm. not as if it's a real TV network. But what really struck me is how when I was talking to other senators or uh, aides on Capitol Hill, very few of them knew that this was happening. So this really is something that is connecting with real people, but not really something that many people in the political spheres understand that's happening. So do we understand the impact, though? It's one thing to say, oh, millions of people are watching this video, but is it leading to more participation in politics? Are they becoming Bernie supporters? Are they maybe won over by a particular argument? Yeah, well, we don't actually know because, of course, one of the things that Sanders is pretty open about is that in this age with Trump in the White House and with Republicans controlling the Senate, it's not as if many of his policies are going to get passed anyway, but he is trying to make them more popular and in some cases that has happened. It is an interesting question, though, in terms of the politics of it all. What a number of people who have worked for even Hillary Clinton in 2016 said to me is, 
once 2020 rolls around, this is what communications offices of campaigns are going to look like. They're going to be producing their own content and spend a lot less time trying to convince people like me, national reporters, mm -hmm. that they're worth paying attention to. They're just going to go straight to the people. So there has been a shift. Mm -hmm. And once again, you asked about whether or not this was leading to 2020, and they said? Uh, ask me again in a few months. That's what they said. <laughs> All right, Gabe DeVetti, Teddy, thank you very much. Thank you.